we took a break from the list. You were in Arizona, so we haven't gotten it. So there could be a pretty big shakeup in the top five worst teams, the top five best teams. And then we're also going to preview all of the games and then try and figure out what the hell is the point of this in-season tournament? Did anyone ask for it? Did anyone want it? We're about to dive into the robot that is Adam Silver and his thought process in this. But we have the documents, which is the most important thing here. And we are ready for the top five worst teams in the NFL, according to the Brickyard. And I've talked about this list, and many people believe that this is the best list around, not just on the interwebs, not just on YouTube, not just on Twitter, everywhere. It's documented. They know about it. I looked at that list, and I was like, wow, what a great list. What a great <laughs> list. So let's get started here with the top five worst teams in the NFL, the most deplorable, the most despicable, dare I say, dreadful teams in the NFL. But there's a couple teams I need to leave off this list because either they won this week or maybe they've just been playing some good football. One team I have to spare, and they've been dragged through the mud throughout the season, but I'm going to spare the Denver Broncos because not only did they beat the defending champs, but they also beat the Buffalo Bills. And over the last four games, 3-1 and one has the best defense in the NFL despite having the worst defense the first five weeks. The Denver Broncos are spared. Russell Wilson's been playing well. Sean Payton seems like he's figuring it out. For now, the Denver Broncos are spared. Another team that is spared because they got a win this week, Kyler Murray and the Cardinals in this sense. So maybe it's because I was in Phoenix for the past week, and maybe it's that warm weather that I strongly miss in this lowly New England weather. But those two teams are not on this list. But there might be a few surprises, so stay tuned. Number five worst team in the NFL, and we had to bear their sights on Thursday night football. The only thing carrying them together is their 6'6", handsome tight end, and that is Cole Komet, and that is the lowly Chicago Bears. Now, we had to watch them and the Carolina Panthers last week in the battle of the bad on Thursday night football. They are they had 14 straight losses when a team scores first prior to that game, but luckily for the Panthers, they are just as bad, and you might see them on this list at one point. But they're on this list for a couple of reasons. For one, I don't know if we even documented this, they traded for Montez Sweat, and they signed him to a Nick Bosa-level contract. Four years, $100 million. Huh? Montez Sweat? As good as Nick Bosa? Are you serious? And then just, just an eyesore to watch. You have DJ Moore. You have Cole Komet. And yet, I just want to, every time I watch this team play, I just want to gouge my eyes out. Just abysmal. Just terrible. We like Tyson Badgett. He's a good story. But, you know, as much as you like to arm wrestle, you can't wrestle with the big boys in the NFL. And that is why you're on the bottom five list. I'm going to get this team out of the way because they're pathetic as well. But we expected this. We called it here. I'm going to put the Carolina Panthers at number four. I know you're going to say to me, well, they're one and eight. Shouldn't they be at number one? This is the most confidential list in the NFL. The best of the best. Some may say the best list. I saw the list. I said, what a great list myself. <laughs> Carolina Panthers at number four. And again, this is another team that we had to watch on primetime. For some reason, they hate Monday. They hate Thursday. And apparently they hate Sunday night football as well. We had to watch the Carolina Panthers again on primetime. <laughs> Bryce Young, a sad, sad showing here because we have C.J. Stroud, who's emerging as a top five quarterback in the NFL, and then there's Bryce Young. And I think Adam Thielen really resembled his words here when he said that the offense is embarrassing. Thank you, Adam Thielen. I was going to say it myself, but I'm glad you aired it out here. This is a team that is 0-5 when they start <laughs> and score first. Not going to get it done in the NFL. Horrible, horrible offense. Adam Thielen, this is the same guy who said that this is a team that can make the Super Bowl. I don't think this team could make the Puppy Bowl at this point. This team is an absolute joke, absolute eyesore, embarrassment of a team to watch. I hate watching the Panthers, and that is why they're the fourth worst team in the NFL. But wait, there's more. <laughs> then we have the Ming Hao Patriots, a.k.a. the Shanghai Patriots. That's right. Ming Hao Mack at it again. You saw him in Germany. Germany, they were about to join the third right again just because of how bad they were. They saw the Patriots. They're like, damn, this is American football? Jesus Christ. I think we should build the bomb, dare I say it. Oh, my God. So the Patriots <laughs> are 2-8 and eight for the first time in the Robert Kraft era, and it's well-deserved. They have horrible draft skills. They haven't signed anybody in free agency. They gave a massive bag to Mike Kosicki, who can't really do much offensively. Uh, they signed Jonu Smith to a massive contract. Woof. That hasn't bared well for them. And it's all crumbling down. It's a crumbling castle in New England. Patriots place is no more. Patriots, which was once the juggernaut of the NFL, 14-2 throughout all of the 2010s. 
And now we're going to bear fruit to the 2-14 and 14 Patriots at this point, as they have been an absolute eyesore. Can't score more than 17 points, unless there's another team that could possibly on this list that they could beat. Patriots, number three team, just an absolute eyesore of a team to watch. You're talking about 17 points. And then even when they hold the team to 10 points, that's not enough because Cupcake Mac throwing <laughs> lollipops. I don't know if he thinks he's at a candy store, but best believe he's not throwing any sweet dimes. He's throwing cupcakes to the defense, throwing it to the defense when it matters most. Patriots at number three. I'm going to get this team out of the way as well because they're pathetic and they're definitely worse than this team but we kind of expected it. But yet again, they have a negative 148 point differential. Every team that beats them tends to take out all their aggressions of weeks past and absolutely desecrate them. You saw the Cowboys knock them off. You saw even the lowly Raiders beat up on this team two weeks past. I have the New York Giants at number two. Outscored 89 to 17 against your rival, your number one rival in the NFL. Are you kidding me? This would be like, if in weeks in years past, if the Patriots got absolutely annihilated in the Tom Brady era, getting annihilated by the lowly New York Jets at the time. This is an absolute disgrace. I understand your team sucks. I understand that your franchise quarterback is out for the season in Daniel Jones. Whether that's a blessing or not, I guess that remains to be seen. You have Danny DeVito at quarterback there. He wants his nice warm blankie with a glass of milk by the bedside with his <laughs> cookies. Nice and warm that his mommy made him for him. That's not enough to be a franchise guy. And this Giants team... Brian Dayball, I know he didn't have any hair, but at this point, he's not even going to have a beard when it's all sitting down because he's going to tear every last hair, whether it's pubic hair, whether it's armpit hair, whether it's chest hair, all the hair on Brian Dayball will be bald. He might even have eyebrows at the end of the season because all the hair will be falling out from frustration. The Giants, they are the second worst team. And at number one, a new addition to this list, but they might be on this list a few more times because... This is a team that should not be on the worst five teams list. In fact, this is a team that could be on the top five list if they are as good as they say they are. Let's go. But you're sitting here. They are out of playoff contention. They have a top five quarterback in the league. But yet, I think he's top five at throwing it to the defense. And that is the lowly, dare I say it, Buffalo Bills at number one. And you're thinking, oh, but these other teams have a losing record. Well, come <laughs> next week, so will the Bills. Because Josh Allen has six straight games with an interception. Not good. Gabe Davis, where are his hands? Did they cut him off in surgery? What happened to his hands? He can't catch anything. There is a 50-50 chance that he catches it and a 50-50 chance that he bounces it off his hands and bounces into the corner's hands on the defensive side of the ball. Sean McDermott's era is over. I guess he can go back to bitching about Hampton Beach and his special. That's right. I made a Bill Burr reference there in case you missed it. <laughs> and then I have to put this here for one other reason. If you watched the Monday night game, which I was lucky enough to watch, <laughs> Will Lutz misses a 41-yard field goal. And we're thinking, really, really, Denver, you're going to blow this? They had so many opportunities to give the game to the Bills, and yet the Bills have said, no, no, hold my beer. We're going to put 12 teams on the defense and give them another chance to kick an even shorter field goal for Will Lutz. They lose this game. And another chance here. The game is basically over. They have a pass interference. They move it up. How are you 5-5? Five and five? This yeah. is a, the, the team that some anointed as a MVP in Josh <laughs> Allen, some team that some anointed as a Super Bowl favorites at certain points, and you're 5-5? Five and five? And we look at the schedule. They face teams like the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Jaguars, all these teams that they face in the future. And yet we look and we don't even know if they're going to finish 500 at this point. And we don't know. And that is why for the Buffalo Bills, what the hell is going on with you? I have to put them as the worst team in the NFL. Are, are they as bad as the Giants, and the Patriots? That remains to be seen. But for how bad they've been, this is a punishment. This is a disgrace. Stefan Diggs deserves to leave. Josh Allen, bring him back to QB school because he clearly forgot how to be a quarterback in the NFL. Has led the league in interceptions not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, five times in the NFL. He has thrown the ball to the other team more than any quarterback in the NFL since 2018. But yet he's the second best quarterback in the NFL. Give me a break. You guys need to lay off the crack at this point. The Buffalo Bills are the worst team in the NFL.